Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bicious RV, and I've done some Northwoods and I've had so many requests. Josh, are you ever going to record some outdoors RVs? Well, yes, in fact, today we are. This is the uh, 28 BKS, and um, they took a very common floor plan. And, and what Northwood does, they don't necessarily reinvent the wheel when it comes to the floor plans. They just build it better. Like, you have uh, thicker 2-inch sidewalls, all of the uh, laminated walls and stuff, anything um, like your slide box, it's all CNC routed and cut, so it's machine precise within one one thousandth of an inch. Um, and then where they, like, you know, they cut a window out of a slide wall or something like that, they repurpose that stuff, and that actually becomes, like, your dinette base that you're sitting on. Uh, they even go an extra step. They will insulate the top of the front pass-through compartment, even though they have thicker walls and thicker baggage doors, just to make sure you sleep more comfortably at night. And they are well known for their hot, cold climate packages, enclosed heated belly tank heaters, all that jazz. But they, uh, the, the, one of their big claims to fame, just like Northwood, is they have that custom-built off-road chassis that they do in-house. They don't buy a chassis from someone else they build it they guarantee it they warrant it and uh you have goodyear endurance radials and even a shock suspension system on here so that if you do feel like getting off the pavement and getting away from people you're not going to rattle trap your cabinets apart when you get there uh private bedroom up front uh double over double bunkhouse in the back with a cargo door but they did almost a classic side cargo door, which has some really cool benefits, but also has a couple drawbacks. And that's the kind of stuff I want to give you in this video, to show you what they do, what they don't, and help you decide if this one might be the one for you. But these are really, really fun. I'm glad I got my, uh, I got a chance to get my hands on a couple of these, because they're made in Oregon. And being from Southern Michigan, eh, I just don't see them every day. So uh, I'm out here actually with my brothers and sisters uh, at our Utah stores, getting my hands on these. So, uh, you know, if you appreciate how they got these all set up for us, make sure you leave me a little note so say thanks you uh, you know the team at utah team utah you you team ta there's nothing there is there i'm looking for nothing and there's nothing there nothing now like anything there's things i see in this that i really like and there's a couple things i see in this that i don't know that i'm a big fan of um i will say this if you like the color brown all of the color browns you're probably going to like this although i do feel it's not quite as mixy matchy as say like an arctic fox sometimes those things they they've got like 16 different shades of brown in the same rv word has it though that in just a shocking twist of events the the sister brand to this outdoors rv northwood rv may actually be touching up their decor for this coming season i don't think they're going to go like super crazy different but um word is people are gonna like what they see i guess time will really tell we're a bunkhouse, so let's start with the bunks. We've got a window that opens for airflow. We've got a switch for the lights in the bunk, which is great, so that, you know, if uh, the kids are up in the bed and you want to tell them lights out, kids, you can just flick the switch off right there, which is different from flipping the switch off. Keep that in mind. That, that sentence could have two different interpretations. Household and USB outlets for both beds. And this is a cargo bunk feature. We're going to come back and look at that, but notice how you have two separate bunk curtains. Something... Um, I, I don't know that I love in this RV, and I think there is a way around it. I wish manufacturers would start doing this. The TV's nice. The TV's uh, in the right location across from the theater seat, or, or sofa, as it were. Theater seats is an option, but it is all the way up to the ceiling. So it's still kind of a neck wrecker. That's just sort of one of the things with the floor plan. Um, I wish manufacturers would start doing a, uh, a, a sort of drop-down kind of uh, television like you see sometimes in the garages of a toy hauler. Like a momentum is really good for that, and it, it really takes a lot of the neck strain out. Um, over here in the kitchen, they only do gas electric two-way fridges. That's just uh, so many people are boondock dry campers over here in the Pacific Northwest. They cater to their local clientele, so that's just kind of what they do here. I would really personally like it if they started offering a 12-volt swaption, um, especially considering the uh, different solar package stuff that they have available. Um, the uh, uh, kitchen counter, all solid surface. I want to back up real quick. They did something. A lot of manufacturers build a floor plane like this, right? But most of the time, the refrigerator is right up next to the stove, so you have, like, no prep space. First of all, the solid surface sink covers and the fact that they are fully fitted so they don't jiggle around, like you see how they're uh, kind of notched out like that, that keeps them right in place and totally flush with everything. Then you have the countertop extension flip up, which is great, but then you have this extra chunk of space over here. So it doesn't matter if you're a lefty or a righty, whichever way you like to turn the pot handles, it's not a big 
deal, you know. Uh, not, we're not in fisheye wide angle lens mode. We do have that big vaulted ceiling there and making it feel a little bit more open. They always like to throw a little skylight up here to let a little uh, extra light inside. Uh, they're very good about maximized windows around that slide, although this RV most certainly does lack windows um, on the campsite of the RV. And some folks are going to have a heart attack that there's uh, carpet over here in front of the slide. This is a very classic style of company. They don't do newfangled things too awful often, and they stick with carpet so it stays warm on your toes. Now, right here is the standard um, trifold height of bed. We're going to see that open in a minute. You notice it kind of looks like it's almost worn in, doesn't it, with the, with the indented butt buckets? But if you actually look at it, it's much, much thicker than the average height of bed that you normally have. Uh, so it's a little more comfortable if you sit in the left or right seat. Now, if you want a little bit more of a thrilling time, you sit right in the middle and whoosh, never mind. Uh, the, the plugs down here by the floor, I, I personally would like to see them up higher. In case you're wondering, once again, super classic feature right here. Just a cup holder. Just a little cup holder built right in. You'll see one on the other side of the couch, too. And it's just little details like that that sometimes uh, separate brands, you know. Uh, let's weave our way up to the front bedroom here. This is a 60 by 80 queen bed, by the way. Um, the, the bedroom is in certain spots, like under those uh, overhead cabinets. It is a little dark, um, but like that's the biggest nitpick I have. That being said, I don't know that I want to I, I want it lit up like the, the Las Vegas strip at night when I'm in my bedroom. I want just enough light to, to put on my skivvies, and then I, I want to get out of here. And something I love that they do, wherever you see the fans... You're going to get the big fan, man. You are not going to have to deal with the little dollar store four inch fart fans in these. Now, these by default are solar prepped. If you do get one of their solar packages, which uh, we'll talk about outside, uh, that's where your charge controller would be located. So that's where the wiring actually runs to. Uh, both side stands are very nicely open, nicely sized, which is kind of cool. Um, and over here, you might notice you've got a, a little bit of a remote control. That is for the fan above the bed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, technical difficulties. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> okay, okay, we're, we are, uh, you know what, we're pointing at this cabinet. Let's just keep on rolling. Let's open that cabinet up and take a look around. As I said, we have a remote control for the big XL Max Air vent fan up top. Um, but what's really cool here is they do their underbed storage a little bit differently. They, um, they basically build a dresser drawer onto each side, and then the easy lift portion of the bed uh, that is, in a sense, its own shallow dresser drawer. Um, you know, the, what, what they found when they were pulling their, their customers is that a lot of people were using that for clothes. But if somebody was um, laying on the bed, the other person couldn't get their clothes out until the other person woke up. So, the, you know, they, they added the drawers to kind of eliminate that issue. You may also notice, like, if you look on the right-hand side of that doorway, they're very good about giving us switches for all of the outlets and boy i had to engage the core muscles to get up there i am uh i am not in the best shape of my life unless you ca call round and bulbous uh, a little bit of a shape there let's take a look at uh, all the storage in this one because the thing is there's a lot more than you realize it actually starts right over here behind that big double pivot tv which if you want to face the dinette um, I actually think you could pivot that thing and you can watch TV from the can, man, in this one. That is called Toilet TV Certification, and they have some serious storage around that entertainment center. Um, the uh, drawers in this are a, a little bit taller, so they go triple drawers instead of uh, double drawer or quadruple drawers, basically, so you can put bigger, thicker stuff in them, which is kind of nice. And um, where they have, like, the big window cutouts in their laminated slide walls, they use that stuff to create the uh, extra thick, extra strong bases that you have under your dinette, which I love the fact, by the way, that it has um, drawers that they actually lock as well. So they don't just go flying open in transit or anything. And again, it's a it's hundred little done different details that they do in these um, that, that really kind of define them. Um, you know, if, if you ask the folks at uh, ORV, their goal is to make the best built uh, best insulated, longest lasting travel trailers available out there. That's that's their goal. Uh, sliding back here, bathroom is not bad. The way they have everything angled, like if you look at the space around the toilet, the right elbow room was a little tight, but overall, I, perfectly fine. I could totally, totally deal with that. The leg room was great. 
Uh, the counter space in here, like that looks like a small sink. It's just a really big counter space. You got a cabinet to put your Lipitor in there and you got a window to keep the conversation going with the neighbors while you're in here doing what you got to do. Once again, where you get the fans, you only get the bigger fans. And it's only a six and a half foot sidewall, which usually means my head would hit the ceiling in the shower. But with that bolt, not an issue. Not an issue whatsoever, especially since they put the skylight right in front of the shower head. It, it works very, very well. Um, overall, I, I am pretty pleased with what I see. A couple little things. One of the things that may not necessarily work for everybody, though, is when you do close this one up, it does take what I call a uh, two-stage road mode. Because when we close that slide, it pinches off the living room and you need to make sure you fold down that kitchen counter extension. Actually, in case you're wondering why there's electrical tape on these, uh, we're at an RV show. We're trying to make sure people don't push the buttons. Uh, you know, just me. But pushing buttons, if you ask my wife, is something I, I do very naturally. Um, uh, so neither here nor there. But when you close that slide up, obviously we pinch off the bedroom. The good news, remember, you do have a separate bedroom door. So if you want to get up there, um, you know, directly you can. Now, I've noticed something here as well as I spin you around like a record, baby. The slide comes a little too close to the bathroom door with the way that it opens. Um, so I've got a couple ideas for you on that one. So while the slide opens here, you're gonna hear some rubber squeak because the seals on this thing are like, they sound like my belly with indigestion. Anyway, um, if you need to get into that bathroom for road mode, there's two solutions that come to mind. The first one, leave the door open before you close the slide and then make sure you secure it. A, a bungee cord wrapped around the, the bathroom door handle and the ladder for the bunks would work just fine. It'd work great, actually. It'd cost you very little dollars. If the only thing you need is a bungee cord for road mode on this one to buy it, I, I'm pretty sure we'll buy a bungee cord, okay? That's just silly. The other thing is, I don't know that it's impossible to just flip the door so it opens the other direction and then you don't got to worry about the bungee cord method but whatever works for you i just like to provide you that information and then once again remember if you do want to get up here into the bedroom for transit and road mode you do always have that door um they don't give a a peekaboo i see you window in this it is a frosty glass window so you still get the light um and of course we have a deadbolt so you have a choice between sleeping alone or sleeping with friends <laughs> that did that's not, not what I meant. That's not what I meant. You can. You can totally watch TV from the can, man. This is RV. We'd like to congratulate the Rogers family on their brand new used Thor motorhome. Congratulations. We've got another one. Congratulations to the Rogers family on your brand new used motorhome. Now, you hear me say this quite a bit if you watch my videos all the time. Every RV's greatest asset is also its greatest liability. And in this case, that thicker, better build means you're gonna need a thicker, bigger truck. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily recommend this very readily for a lot of half tons. Go ahead, folks. We're, we are here in a live RV show display. We're making friends with the back of people's heads today on camera, apparently. Um, thanks for coming in, by the way, guys. Uh, anyway, what are we looking at here? So um, you got that full candy-coated nose cap up front, and Lord, it just has a good look. But when we get down, a lot of full nose caps don't have any level of stone guard. And when you start throwing the word off-road or off-pavement or off-whatever, the wall, I don't know, um, you don't want to be throwing stones at your camper, so they protect it. You got the 30-pound propane tanks, and notice how they use a really tall shank uh, uh, front tongue jack. That's because, especially out here, a lot of people have these uh, lifted-up, jacked-up trucks, and they need the extra length on that tongue jack, or else you'd never be able to get the thing hitched up or uh, unhitched properly. The walls are a true 2-inch, which is fairly uncommon in the world of travel trailers. It's not exclusive to ORV by any means, but it is less common. And they do use thicker baggage doors, but even things like their slam latches, notice how it's their, their double catches on the slam latches, basically. It just holds a better seal. They are also very, like, this is a nicely sized pass-through. It's not only wide, it's as wide as it is tall, frankly. Um, over here, a couple handy little campsite features behind a little sliding panel to keep it out of the way from shifting cargo. That, like, I saw that and I almost just passed out. I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody is really putting on their thinking caps here today. Not the kind of thing I normally see in the RV industry. Similar to that, a fully insulated bed deck. You see how you've got that block foam insulation under your bed deck so that you maintain more even temperatures there? That is very, very cool. Now, by default, this doesn't have solar. 
but it has like quadruple solar prep. So off the side here, you could go up to a 200 watt portable panel up on the roof. Um, and actually, uh, we'll get back there in just a minute. You'll see that there's actually triple plugs. We'll talk more about that when we get up there. First though, kudos to them for putting on the, the, the double up awning over here, nicely clearing both entry doors. Um, the, uh, the far door, it's a little close to the awning arm, but not, I've seen worse, you know, it's not terrible. What I do also want to point out though, because it's so easy to miss, look at the awning arm roller. You see how that is shielded and protected? So while you're not using the awning, uh, while the RV's in storage is keeping it protected from the worst of the rain, the weather, or like a low hanging tree branch or something like that. Now they're um, at, at a glance, it, it may seem a little underwhelming, but hang with me guys. Goodyear Endurance Radials, awesome, good start. Now we're going to a Moride CRE 3000 suspension system with bronze bushings and greasable zerks. That's nice. And then if you peek over here, you see they actually, they don't even just prep for, they install uh, a shock suspension system to give you a better, smoother ride and handling. Oops, almost forgot something over here. Get this open for you. Flip that, roll it over, flip it and reverse it. And you see you got your propane cooker hooker down there. Why they give you an access door to it when, it could, when it's already under the skirt? I'm not sure, but I don't, I don't have to understand um, everything, obviously. Now. They don't, they, they intentionally don't do those fold down stable steps. Cause if you do want to get, you know, off the pavement, off the beaten path, you go to a lot of campsites where those stable steps don't marry up with the ground properly and they can actually prevent you from closing the door. Now, if you're like, I don't care, I'm not going off road. I want stable steps. We can do that. That's just screwdriver work. Don't let little stuff like that kind of trip you up. Now you see that <laughs> big old bunkhouse door over here. I don't normally open um, a lot of storage live on camera like this, but I really wanted to demonstrate how with one lady finger chicken arm, you can easily convert that into uh, you know cargo mode. Now I said that there's some ups and downs with this design. With this coming in off the side, it means that they have a bigger, wider door for easier loading. So there are like a lot of folding e-bikes that when you try to sneak them through those rear cargo doors, you're threading the needle and you're kind of scraping into your woodwork sometimes. You don't have that problem here. What it doesn't allow for that the rear cargo doors do, like if you've got like a kayak, sometimes you can load those right up the back side of this thing, which reminds me, the last time I, um, I uh, forgot to take out the garbage. My wife told me she was going to load her kayak up my backside. So I have never since forgotten to take out the trash. It's kind of funny how that works. A little bit of, uh, you know, threatening of physical violence seems to actually, you know, be the language I understand. Never mind. Um, <laughs> got a little, I'm going to call that a bike rack receiver on the back. Only, I think, two states allow you to tow a trailer behind a trailer. And it's only got about a 250 pound vertical load limit. Just like the, uh, the, the the nose cap though, even their rear bumper has like a little anti-weather coating on it. Just every little extra thing they can do to offer a measure of protection there. Something that you can't see uh, unless I get you up closer, which I suppose I'm the only one that, I'm the, I'm the reason you can't see it, is even behind the back tires so they're not throwing stones at your sewer stuff. They give you like little mud flaps and stuff like that. And as long as we're down here, enclosed, forced air, heated belly, insulated, holding tank heaters. They are renowned for being an excellent cold camp uh, kind of RV. And I don't know if you heard that big thud just now, but even the outside shower door is a full insulated one inch thick door. If um, you've ever worked in this industry, you know that when it comes to dewinterization time, the outside shower door is actually the number one thing that people forget to winterize. And uh, it's, it's kind of nice having that dedicated door there. Now, I do try to tell you the good with the bad. One thing I did notice over here, this is a two-headed sewer monster. You, uh, we saw the sewer hookup in the back. That is for the bathroom, black and gray. This would be dedicated to just the, uh, the kitchen gray. It's a bummer, but I'm not going to conveniently forget to show it. I hope you uh, ap appreciate the full candor and transparency there. Now, I, I realize I told you we were gonna talk about the solar and it almost grew to me, I almost forgot. Anyway, so by default, this has a portable, uh, a plug on the side for a portable panel up to 200 watts. Up on the roof, by default, you've got three plugs. Each are designed to be able to accept a 170 watt panel. 
um, you can order this from the factory with one, two, or three of those panels, and they will give you the charge controller adequate for the solar package that you order. I think the minimum they do is like 30 amps, though. Uh, so you, you do have the ability to really build a pretty robust solar package on this. Um, you've also got 60 pounds of propane up front. You have some really good holding tank capacities. If you just want to get in the parks, or get out of the parks, get away from people, <clears throat> that one, uh, that'll do it. So this is only the second ORV I've been able to record, and if you're like me, uh, you like these ORVs. I'm gonna do my best to try to get as many as I can, and thankfully, I've got a nice selection here, and now I'm gonna get a YouTube strike for copyright music. So, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.